What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Mike Avelli, and I'm back with another reaction video. This is an Alabama pastor who was arrested while watering neighbor's garden speaks out. So without further... Kobe Bryant crash photos lawsuit. But without further ado, man, let's get it. Now to the black pastor arrested by Alabama police as he was watering his neighbor's garden while they were out of town. T.J. Holmes is with uh -huh. us now and what Pastor Michael Jennings is saying after the ordeal. Good morning. Uh, all right, Stray. Um, this is racial while profile. Black, walking while black, golfing yeah. while black, swimming yeah. while black, yeah. napping while black, staying yeah. in an Airbnb while black, yeah. sitting in a Starbucks while black, yeah. bird watching while black. Yeah. It's become a part of our vernacular here. And look, you and I talked about plenty of these stories here. Add to this now, watering your neighbor's plants while black. That's Damn. what this pastor was doing, and police were called on him. And now we have this police body cam video that shows how he goes from literally. Okay, so in most situations that I've seen, I'm not saying that this is uh, anything, uh, you know, that that's not what this is. But I'm just saying, like, in the situation that I've seen, bro, normally that happens. I mean, it can happen anywhere. Like, it don't matter, right? But usually it happens like when you're like whoever you're watering the flowers and plants in the garden for they live in a nice neighborhood which means there's a whole lot of you know white people here or you know the majority of the neighborhood is white or a little bit of asian too you know and you have these like a suburban neighborhood so you have these people who look out you've never seen a black guy around here this is an expensive area to live in. And we know, you know, just our 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 narrow mindedness, we know black people are usually up to no good. So if we see them around here, that's not good. So we have to inform our our uh I wonder if did they even do that. But yeah, but we have to inform our police department that it's a black guy out here watering our neighbor's garden and she's not even here. We would call her, but we probably don't have her number. So we just called you guys. That's crazy, bro. But like I say, this is probably a suburban neighborhood, most likely a, a, a place in Alabama where a lot of rich folks stay, you know. Because I would have, I would, it's hard to believe that this would happen in the hood. Like, uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just wouldn't go together. Let's see. A water hose to handcuffs in just a couple of minutes. Water hose to handcuffs. I ain't did nothing suspicious or nothing wrong. I could just look at the neighborhood and tell, yeah, that's not the hood. That's in a suburban area. Yeah, yeah. Like I, told I said. Him I'm a pastor. I pastor. I don't hear you. You want to lock me up? Lock me up. This newly released police body camera video shows the arrest of an Alabama pastor. Yeah, look at the neighborhood, bro. Look, look, look at this house right here. Yeah, like that don't look like no bring his neighbor's plants. Do what you got to do, girl. Don't lock me up. This past spring, Pastor Michael Jennings was doing a favor for a neighbor who'd asked him to water their plants while they were out of town. But police arrived and started questioning him. This vehicle is not supposed to be here, and you're not supposed to be here. Who's saying it? I'm Pastor Jennings. I live across the street. You're Pastor Jennings? Yes, I'm looking out for the house. He lived. Oh my god, he lived there. So that's even worse. So you guys see this guy every day leaving his house or whatever the case. And I act like he a minister. So I'm thinking this is a pastor that lives way across in another part of Alabama that's coming on this side of Alabama to water, you know, a lady's plants as a favor or something. But no, he just said he lives across the street. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, that's cool. Do you have like ID? And oh, all? no, man. I'm not going to be you no know, ID. Why not? I ain't did nothing wrong. With it. And if you're not one to right. identify yourself. I, who called y'all? That's what we got to figure out. I ain't did nothing oh, suspicious. Or nothing they wrong. know who called. They just don't want to tell. Pastor. I pastor. I don't want to hear you. Sir. You want to lock me up? Lock me up. We're, we're just trying to talk to you, man. Come here. Look, man. Let me see your uh, phone. Let me see your phone, dude. Just calm down, okay? No, no. Stop. Do what you got to do. Go on okay. and lock me up. I told you I'm a pastor. Okay, look, man. I, uh, who called y'all? You have to identify yourself. All I did said, hey man, do you live here? Nah. Is that your car? Nah. 
The pastor was eventually put in the back of a squad car. A woman soon arrives on scene, identifies herself as a neighbor, and vouches for Pastor Jennings. He lives right there, and he would be watering their flowers. This is probably my fault. She says she is the one who made the initial call to police. You. So you called not because of the car, but because you thought you saw someone besides him. Right. I didn't know it was him. Yeah. He, I got to keep their flowers watered. I got to keep their flowers watered while they're down. You okay? Jennings spoke to GMA about the ordeal. It was kind of uh, surreal at that moment because I'm wondering, why is this happening? I was thinking if I did something wrong or resisted that I could have been shot. So mm -hmm. I was trying to cooperate, even though I didn't understand what was going on. I was right. agitated. I was angry, but I knew to. And you have every right to be broke, because like I say, you guys, this happens every day to black people. Luck, it just so happens that luckily, this one was like was like literally a mistake. I didn't know it was, which is kind of don't make sense to me, because it was still like, yo, he's your neighbor. You see him every single day. Like, there's no way. Like me, I see my neighbors almost every single day. So there's no way that if I see one of them watering their garden or one neighbor watering the other neighbor's garden, that I'm not going to know what she's doing over there. Why would I call it a police? Like, clearly you and that neighbor had an understanding that you were going to do that or that they were OK with you doing that. So uh, mind my damn business after that. Like, <laughs> like, you know, what I'm saying even if it was somebody that wasn't a neighbor that lived around here. And they came from where they live to come all the way over here to water their water a uh, friend's garden. That's none of my business either, you know. But I, but at the same time, I do understand, you know. Neighbors look out for neighbors. Like, hey, my neighbors not, not here; they're out of town. Why are you over here on their property? But at the same time, you should recognize this dude. Why isn't that you didn't recognize him until he got? cuffed and arrested and got put through what he put through what he went through i get it mistakes happen but i'm just telling you guys man a lot of the times things like this happen they don't come out successful like this they don't comply the 56 year old maintains this was a case of racial profiling you racial profile we're not racial profile no sir no sir we're not about I that i told okay? you i was here wanting to fly but how do i know that's the truth anybody I had water holes in my hand I was throughout the video police can be heard suggesting that the situation might have been different if jennings had provided identification it doesn't matter if pastor or if he's a pastor or not like the thing is nice enough reasonable guy just talk to us alabama law allows police to ask someone for identification in a public place if they reasonably suspect that person of committing a crime to be shackled and to have your freedom taken away from you you know it's something else it's uh, dehumanizing but still even if that is the case even if they were really racially profiling you you have to think, hey, this person is the one that called him over here, your neighbor. So even if that was the case, bro, I guess looking deeper into it, if you look at what she says as true, which is I didn't recognize it was him. I just assumed that it was some random black guy watering my neighbor's garden. OK, because like I said, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of, you know, we even live in neighborhoods like that. I'm pretty sure it does happen a lot, bro. Where, like I say, neighbors look out for neighbors. You look out for me, I look out for you. That's how it pretty much is when it comes to when you living in suburban areas. That's usually how it is. You know, a lot of times it's not just it's a good percentage of times. But there's also a percentage of times where it's not like, oh, Yo, you're black. You could afford to live here. A lot of times, there's some times where it's not like that, you know, and in those times, that's when, hey, watch my house while I'm going or watch your house when you're gone. You know, you have each other's backs, bro. So that's why on one hand, this doesn't make sense. And even if it did make sense to where, like I say, she didn't recognize him, it still looks like, oh, it's just some random black guy watering my neighbor's garden. So I don't know, bro. I really don't know. Racial profiling, like I say, it does happen a lot, bro. It happens a lot. I'm just glad it hasn't happened to me yet. Or hopefully it won't ever happen. But, you know, we live in a society where there's things happen every day, even to the people who you never thought it would happen to. So, <sighs> man.
And I thought, you know, why would they be doing this? It's something that it gives you nightmares. It gives you nightmares. Out. It'll mess your day up. I ain't gonna lie. There was no crime, given he was on private property with permission. The neighbor, a white woman, and they took her word as the gospel truth. But the pastor who preached the gospel every Sunday, they didn't take his word at all. The pastor was charged with one count of obstruction of government operation. That charge was later dropped. Okay. For now, Jennings, Pastor Jennings, says he's leaning on his faith. My faith has helped me a lot because they still I took knew him? that God would work the situation out. You have to forgive people because, you know, you can't judge people and hold things against people. Pastor does say uh, plans to follow a lawsuit. Police department say they have no comment on this because of pending lit uh, litigation. Guys, everybody involved here, the woman who called, maybe questions about what you, you could look at her story and say, why would you call? People look at the police and say, you right. can handle this differently. This is not right. community policing. Police will look at him. People will look at him and say, hey, just show the ID. This didn't have to happen. Right, right. Everybody like, could have done something a little better in this situation. Yeah. And guys, the, the gut punch in this is at the end of this video, his wife shows up on scene when he's in the back of the car, mm. shows, brings his ID. Uh. Police at that point say, we can't unarrest him. What? And he still ends up in jail. Oh, so, yeah. Wow. Maybe we can all learn something from this. Well, that's, that's the thing wild. too. The, the neighbor came out, acknowledges a mistake that right. they still made the charge. And they still made uh, later. Exactly. It, that's it, extraordinary. And again, we're all learning something. This is about yeah. community policing and having a better relationship. This could have been handled by everybody differently. Did you have to haul the pastor off to jail? Right. That question. Right. Even okay. after the neighbor told you she made a mistake. Like, that's the part that threw me off. Because like I was saying, I thought, <laughs> you guys play the video back. I literally sat here and said, before they closed the door with him in the back seat, I said, not too often in situations where, like this, where you get racially profiled, you get off easy. At that point, I was only speaking if they took the cuffs off him and let him go and went on about their business. But when they closed the door, I, you, you guys seen, I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. Yeah, that's a lawsuit, bro. It's just Got unfortunate. Well, hopefully everybody learns something. We're learning, TJ. You're yes. doing these stories too often. Yeah, you know, you're not having true. too many of these conversations, Trey. Yep, no doubt. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. That's crazy, bro. If you guys like this video, man, give it a fat thumbs up. Like, comment, share. Mike and Belly Gang, we up out of there, man. I love you guys, man. You guys have a blessing. Save it. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.